Swizzle stick cast on number 17 and action. Oh my goodness. What a fortnight it has been since I last saw you. The sweater that I was trying to get off the ground, I talked to you about it for a while and how at that point, I think I had tried 12 different cast ons, none of which worked. I kept trying new things, new things. Um, I even dipped into a local yarn shop to ask for their advice, even though I purchased this yarn at Rhinebeck. And they were so gracious. Thank you, Annie's Upper East Side, Manhattan. The woman there, I think her name was Jenny, suggested that if I did a knitted cast on, that I might not get that worming, the, the loops. Can you see these loops popping out? Because even on this version, which was doing pretty well, I, I kind of mastered that problem. Here's, here's some. I mean, later on, I would have tried to spread these out and, and work them into the open work. Um, I also tried several different lace motifs because I found that the more yarn overs there were and the more, um, what were some of the things, pass slip stitch over and sometimes there was pass over the right stitch and pass over the left stitch. Some of that twisting operation just wasn't at all agreeing with this yarn. It's a chenille, it's kind of like a tape. It's not really tubular. It's more sort of flat like a tape. It's so beautiful, which is why I kept trying and trying and trying because I really had hopes of developing just a beautiful vintage sweater. I'll insert a picture here of the sweater I'm trying to accomplish. Anyway, I finally did knit up this far and I weighed, I weighed the remainder of the ball. This started out as 68 grams, 200 yards. So I had only two of these. I had only 400 yards total. It became unwieldy working off of the skein, which I'm sometimes able to do without winding. But I was afraid if this got knotted up, it would be very difficult to unknot because it kind of clings to itself. So I did wind it into a ball. And when I got to this point, I thought, I wonder if I've used up half of the ball yet. Let me just weigh it. So I weighed this and I found that I had gone through half the yarn already, half of the skein. So just having double the height of this, mm, it wasn't even going to get me to the underarm for one side. And then I still had the other side to do. So I thought, okay, it's clear to me now, I'm not going to have enough yarn. I either have to choose a different lace motif that will work with the worming and give me more mileage per yard, or I have to choose a different pattern. And I'm completely at a loss now. So I am requesting that you, my audience, search Ravelry, see what you can come up with. Maybe you have some private pattern. See if you're able to find a lovely vintage pattern for a garment. Maybe it, I don't really wear shrugs. I know a shrug would take up a lot less yarn. I was hoping for something that was kind of, you know, just to the waist, um, maybe even two yarns that I could combine something else with this. I did think of doing some kind of striping, alternating this with maybe mohair or something else. I want a sweater with this yarn because look at the color. Is it not the most beautiful color you've ever seen? I mean, especially for... I think for my coloring. So comment below, let me know if you have any ideas. Um, maybe next time I would even post the pictures that you send me and maybe we could have a, like a, a contest to see um, which one is your favorite. 
So the limitation is 400 yards. And this yarn seems to knit very well on a size five needle. So bear that in mind when you're looking for your pattern. Um, I'll figure out a way. I guess the thing to do if you want to send me pictures would be, let me think about this. Probably the thing to do is just put a link to the pattern on Ravelry and I'll go look at it and I'll be able to pull up the pictures. I think that would work. So that project is in a serious time out. I wasted two weeks of my life knitting exclusively on that, trying to get somewhere. And I don't back down easily, but on this one, I just said, okay, pull the plug, not going to have enough yarn. You know, Fisher cut bait, I cut the bait. And we'll see. Fortunately, I had yarn on hand because if you're a returning viewer, you would certainly know that I tend not to keep stash. I did have this Rowan yarn. It's David McLeod's favorite, Sofiac DK. And a friend of mine invited me to her birthday party this coming weekend. So I thought I would like to knit up something that would be real quick that would use less than one skein because I only had one skein of this color. And I settled on these fingerless mitts. Now you might recall that I knit another pair of fingerless mitts using the same yarn. These are for me. This pattern was Suzanne Bryan's. I think it's written so that you can use any yarn, any gauge. I don't remember exactly, but she does, um, I think, a tubular cast on, tubular bind off. So it, it really is rather nice. I, I mean, I will give her credit for that. But for my friend, I just wanted to do something that would be like quick and easy these took me two days and because of my experience with the knitted cast on, I found that I kind of like that. It takes a little bit longer than long tail cast on, but you don't have to estimate how much yarn you need to cast on with. So here's the, the edge that it gives. It doesn't look like the tubular, but that's okay. I think this is a perfectly respectable edge and it has stretch you know I cast on kind of loosely so it would have good stretch and I just did regular bind off and I think it looks fine don't you they were so delightfully quick to knit oh my goodness and I think Sylvia's hands are longer than mine, probably more slender and a bit longer. And she's an artist, so I think she's just gonna embellish these herself. Um, she does love color. And I, I think the other day when I had tea with her, she was wearing a lot of orange inspired clothing but I do think I'm going to offer her the option of having pom-poms. So I mentioned that I jumped into a local yarn shop and because they were so helpful to me, I wanted to patronize them. You know, I'm not buying yarn. Of course, when I go to Rhinebeck, I intend to, but I thought, well, what can I buy that would just be a little token of my gratitude for their help? So this is what I ended up purchasing. There are two small pom-pom makers. Clover makes larger pom-pom makers, but I thought if I'm only buying one set and I'm not a big pom-pom user, I thought I'd rather have the smaller set. So last time I tried to make a pom-pom with you, it was a total disaster because I didn't have professional strength materials, but I thought I would do that with you now. Um, so let's try these out and see how they work. I'm gonna do the smaller one. And 
you just simply have to believe me when I tell you that other than looking at the first couple of steps of the instructions before I came on with you, I really haven't studied this or attempted it. So the first thing it says is align the arches. So what are the arches? Well, it seems like it's these things. <clears throat> Firmly wind yarn from one end to the other. And their picture shows, the picture shows the person holding it like this and just, just shows them winding, 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 winding. It looks like they're keeping the yarn really side by side. I don't know, when you get to the center, It, there's that gap there, but I have a feeling that that's going to be covered over. Mm -hmm. So, all right, I'm just going to wind randomly Oops. towards the end. I hope this is a total failure like last time. Okay, firmly wind the yarn from one end to the other. Wind yarn evenly so there's a slight space at the center of the inner arch but in their picture it shows that it's really loaded up with yarn see that one it's loaded that wasn't just with one pass and yet they don't say to go back and forth but i think that's what i'm going to do Okay, let me keep winding and then I'll come back to you when I have it to that point. For the next step, it tells you to open the other side arches and do the same thing there. So let me do that and I will come back to you. Well, actually, I'll do it and then I'll just fast forward it. Hard for me to imagine that this is going to be beautiful, but I guess from experience, the more you do it, the better it gets. Has anybody used these? What am I doing wrong? Okay. Then it says, cut the yarn beginning at the gap between arches A and B with a pair of scissors. Okay, so I think they mean in here, let me get a pair of scissors, be right back. Okay. Probably need better scissors, Billy. These scissors aren't working. I grabbed a sharper pair of scissors Still not so easy. Ugh. Oh, I guess if you're patient and you snip a little bit at a time. This is the true test of the yarn to see if it flies all over the place. I would expect this to be kind of messy, but this yarn has a chainette construction, so I don't see anything flying out yet. Oops, there was a little <laughs> burst of fluff. Okay, that's one half. I don't know if that looks plump enough, juicy enough. Let's see. Let cut the other side. Ooh, I would not want to have to do this every day. Okay, now I believe I'm 
cut all the way around. A couple pieces fell out. And the next step is firmly tie a strong thread around the bundle and secure with a double knot. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this, cut this. Now it's separated. And I'll take, I think about 15 inches of this. It'd be hard to tie around the middle if there's anything that's still connected. Okay, so now it looks like you thread this in between and I'm gonna tie it once and then I'll go back around in the other direction. So I'm tying it pretty snugly here and then I'm gonna wrap it back around the other way and tie it snugly in that direction, just with a knot. Secure with a double knot. Okay, I'm gonna knot it yet again. And that would be a double knot on this side. Okay. Gently open one arch at a time. Gently, okay. All right. I'm opening that arch and opening that arch and then I'll turn it around and open this arch and that arch and separate A and B and remove the pom-pom. Okay, so these two pieces have a pin that's holding them together. So I guess I have to pull these apart. <laughs> it looks like a mess. <laughs> In the picture, of course, theirs looks just gorgeous. This one, after they separate A and B, <laughs> they have this beautiful pom pom already. <laughs> With a pair of scissors, trim loose ends to shape. Thanks a lot, fellas. Well, let me see. I think usually in pom pom making, you shake it. I would not be giving this to my friend. And things are falling out. All these little pieces are falling out. Okay, dud. I think I'm a disaster at pom-pom making. This is not my first attempt. I don't think I'll be buying any other pom-pom making tools. I seem to just not be good at it. Now, my mother, she was great. She would take like a cardboard donut, wrap it around, tie the thing around, snip it open, puff, do a little trim. And she was masterful at stuff like this. Well, I will try and trim this, but I want to do it in a place where I can clean up the mess. So... Smush it around a little. Well, clearly that's sticking up, so I can take that down. Those are sticking out. I don't know. It's not my lucky week here. Okay, 
people, please comment. Tell me what I could do better. This is not my strong suit. I guess I have to keep trimming it. Maybe I needed more yarn. It's getting there. It seems like an awful lot of work to get a mediocre result. I'm almost there. Love to hear what you have to say about that. I will see if I can find this pom-pom maker online. You might want to go ahead and order it through an affiliate link that I'll provide in the show notes. And try your own hand at it. Maybe you'll have better success than I do. By the way, in my show notes, I have a wealth of information. I have a whole list of many products that I have used or that I can easily recommend to you. So scroll down that list. Um, I earn a minute amount. I don't think I've earned anything yet from Amazon, but it's possible over time um, as people find these things and are interested in ordering them, I might get some little nominal, you know, pennies payment from Amazon. But I do have things like cedar blocks and the cedar spray and the needles that I use and um, the little task light that I use. So check out that list. There's also some books there. Um, different guests have come on the show and mentioned things. Of course, there's always Susan Crawford's books. So I, I have a list of things in the show notes and I encourage you to take a look. So I invoked the name Rhinebeck. I'm wondering how many of you are planning to go. I just thought I would show you what I wore to Rhinebeck last year. This sweater is the Harlequin sweater that I kind of merged two vintage patterns together. It was a collaboration I did with Roxanne Richardson. If you haven't seen those episodes, I'll, it's this side. I'll leave a link or two up here so you can go back and take a look at those. Um, the yarn was from Quince and Co. And I'll put some information on the screen so you can see. Uh, the specs on that. And I had a little knit hat that goes with that. And I styled it with a couple of necklaces. And down at the bottom, I have a pair of earrings that are triangular. So picked up this Harlequin motif. Because you know that I am a jewelry lover. I have my little vintage earrings on and Grandma Tilly's necklace that she brought with her from Europe. And this is the lace blouse that I showed you on screen last time. The unpackaging of fits great. I'm so happy. Um, it's very pretty. There's all these little lace tucks. And it fits me just great. I have a heavy upper arm and fits around my arm. Well, I knew from another blouse that I had also purchased, it turns out it's made by the same company. I knew how well that one fits. So I had a feeling that this one would fit well too. And I'm happy. What I'm wearing is a pattern that I picked up when I was in Scotland last fall. It's called a Spencer. And it's really meant to be an undergarment, like a nightshirt which this winter on the coldest nights, I might find myself wearing it under my nightgown, but um, took a very long time to knit. There's a lot of twisted stitches, knitting through the front loop, back loop, and so on. Complicated, pretty complicated knit, definitely took a long time. And then there was all this pico edging and around here too, all this crocheting. And then I had a shop for ribbon, to lace through. The pattern didn't call for that, but the holes were there and it just seemed like it lent itself to that. So that's what I have on. Hat is a vintage hat. I already talked about the jewelry. I didn't talk about these bracelets. Um, 
they're all vintage, not Bakelite, but um, perhaps celluloid, something in that plasticky family. Um, getting back to knitting, let's see, what else can I tell you about? I returned to my For the Rink or the Lynx, and I'm just batting a thousand here. I started decreasing for the armhole, one pattern repeat too soon. So fortunately, I'd only done about an inch. I'm not even going to bother to show it to you because that's another thing that I'm just sickened by. But let's get on to happier things. This is a good one. <laughs> I'm trying to hold out until I get to Rhinebeck since it's only a month away. And I'll come there with a couple of patterns that I want to purchase yarn for. But there's been something in my queue for a while. I'm a little off of sweaters now because, yeah, I'm just so disgusted with things not fitting and, you know, the vintage patterns, having to resize them. So I thought, well, let me do something that would be an item that I'll need as we're going into fall and winter and something that could harmonize with things that I've knit recently. So, you know, the gray glassite jacket that I knit, I thought it's very warm, but just in case I need some kind of a shawl or a scarf around it on a really cold day, um, I decided on purchasing from Pearl Soho their linen quill. You know, Pearl Soho several times a year does a pretty decent sale. And I haven't bought from them for a long time, not since they had their store in lower Manhattan. But so many people rave about linen quill. I thought, well, I'd like to try that yarn. And there's a pattern of theirs, a free pattern called the Hollyhock Wrap. I'll put a picture of it here. that has been in my queue and I thought this is the moment this is the time they have I think 50 some odd colors and you know me I have thing with colors I don't just want to knit something else in gray or something else in pink that'd be too easy I want to try and knit things that will coordinate with other things that I've already knit so I thought something that goes really very nicely with charcoal gray is kind of a lavender and they have a color called purple smoke now you know when you order yarn online the color that you're seeing on your computer screen is not likely to be the actual color when you get the yarn in hand But I went out on a limb on this one since they no longer have a store. And I thought whatever shade of lavender it is, it's probably going to be A-OK -okay with all the grays that I have in my wardrobe. And I have many. I have knit more gray sweaters than any other color. In fact, I was thinking of doing an entire episode just on the gray sweaters. So subscribe to my channel and be on the lookout for that. The only way you'll hear about it is if you're a subscriber and if you select the notification bell. So if you haven't already done that, please do that. And then you'll know when I'm coming out with that video. This is the thing that was like the best thing that happened to me all week. I went online, I placed my order and I didn't get an order confirmation, but on that screen, it had the order number, so I knew that my order was placed. I, I wasn't in any doubt about that. But usually companies send you instantly an email with a confirmation. I didn't get it. But as the order was completing, I saw tax. In New York City, we have a special thing, started, I think, by our old mayor, Bloomberg, where it began with just certain days of the year, were tax-free clothing days. This was to attempt to prevent people from going across the river into the state of New Jersey where there's no clothing tax. So it was a trial. They did it, I think, for like the first week of the year and it was successful. A lot of people shop for clothing in New York. Over time, it became a permanent thing. So if you buy clothing in New York City under $110, there's no tax. 
Well, I looked up the tax code and it does include things used in the production of clothing. So thread, buttons, zippers, and yarn. Yes, you heard me, yarn is not supposed to be taxed. So I saw a tax come up, so I immediately emailed Pearl Soho. They have great customer service. They responded to me right away. I said, I noticed that you charged me tax. And they wrote me this whole long thing that there's something about the law with online purchasing that has never been updated. And I could try and contact my local government officials to see if they could fix it. Anyway, unbeknownst to me, behind the scenes, something happened with my order. Initially, I thought it might just be my order, but it turned out after a couple of days, they emailed me to say, nothing to worry about. Your credit card information has not been compromised, but we had a glitch in our system and your order is coming to you for free. <laughs> so never mind the tax. I got the whole kit and caboodle for free. How often does that happen? Yeah, I was so excited. So the tracking information shows that my package should be here this coming Tuesday. I will definitely film my unbundling of that, my, my unwrapping of that to share it with you. And probably by the next time I see you, I will have cast on because I am jonesing for something that is with a well-written pattern that doesn't have any sizing issues. It'll just be like a pleasure finally to knit. So that's coming soon. I don't know about you, but I'm perpetually scrolling through my old emails of which I have saved thousands, looking for things that I haven't read. And I came across an email. Somebody sent me an article from the New York Times, it's from 2021. Do you know where your sweater came from? And it talks about how sweaters go through many, many stages of development from farm to table, if you will. And in some cases, a sweater could travel 18,000 miles. I'm talking about a store-bought sweater, not a hand knit sweater. But I think it's a very interesting read about how some luxury brands are now trying to really focus in on where the yarns are coming from and how many stages they have to go through. And they're trying to keep things closer to home because this is a problem for our environment with flying goods around and polluting the air with our planes. So the closer things are to um, being made where they originate, the better it is for all parties concerned, which is why we like to shop local, right? I try. Pearl Soho used to be local. Anyway, um, I did also order something recently online from the United States. After I saw my friend, Leslie Friend, another knitting podcaster, talk about labels that she had ordered to sew into her garments. And I completely stole this idea from her. So you know what they say, imitation is the highest form of flattery. I had made up these little labels that I can sew into my garments. So it has my name and it says New York, just like Bergdorf Goodman would have New York or Saks Fifth Avenue would have New York underneath. And I'll be sewing it in the back of, I'm gonna try and sew it into all of my sweaters. It's gonna take me time. Um, but I wanted to share with you the company in case you too wanna order from them. This little bag, which is a Ziploc bag, is not plastic. So yay, they're really trying to do their share. Plastic-free compostable package, it says on here. Gotta love that. The company is called Ever Emblem. And here's their website, everemblem.com. If you use the code WELCOME at checkout, you can get 10% off. 
in my case, I have this artwork from my podcast. So I tweaked it a little bit and I sent them a file with the artwork. They can design something for you or you can design your own. And it didn't break the bank. They have them that you can iron on or sew on. I'm going to sew mine on because I want that vintage look of the little cross stitches. In fact, if I ever have them made again, I'll probably make this border a little wider so that those stitches can be really very visible. I also might have wanted a zigzag edge like done with pinking shears. I had pinking shears and I could do it, but I wouldn't want to cut into my design. So next time around, I will probably do something a little differently. That's it for today. If you've enjoyed this episode and you want to see more like it, there will be a box here with a place where you can go and see many, many more episodes. See you next time. Stay well, everyone.